Well, hello there, lovely people of the internet. It's new Nikon time, and the new Nikon in question, which I'm sure the loans department will be pleased to hear, is being kept warm under my armpit. But anyway, I'm gonna keep my voice down a little bit, not because I'm afraid of spilling the beans on this brand new camera, which is under embargo, but because of where I've come to take photos with this new camera. Oof. Yes, indeed, we have come to nature's very own peep show, a bird hide, and I've come armed with the new Nikon Z15 Mark II. Now, the reason why this video might look a little bit different is because I'm filming it with a Z50. Now, the reason why I'm using it is not because I think it's a great camera for filming myself with. In fact, I had to practice the framing just now because the tilty flippy screen doesn't tilt all the way down. It tilts down, which is problematic when you've got a tripod. But no, the reason why I've got it is just to show the differences between old and new, new and old. At first glance, there's a new placement of the letter Z and has beefed up a bit in the five years since the Z50 was launched. But we need to delve beneath the surface to see the improvements that matters. Now, I must say that I'm not exactly a bird photographer. I've taken photos of birds before, lots of birds. But I have to admit, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. Even less of a clue than usual. It takes a passionate understanding of the subject, knowing what exactly is special. I mean, I just end up taking photos of seagulls and bog standard ducks. All right, so what exactly is new with the two? Well, the resolution is the same. What is new, however, is a Fancy Pants new processor, the Xpeed 7 processor, which makes it a lot snappier than before. Although we're not exactly presented with much thrilling action right in front of us, this processor should make it very capable indeed. In fact, it gives it the same subject tracking as the Z9. So therefore, it has got nine types of subject tracking and it can detect that automatically. You've got 3D tracking and enhanced responsiveness. With 3D tracking on, you have a little square. Half press to lock focus on the subject and you keep the shutter button half pressed so it'll track the movement and it works well. It did lose it for a brief moment, but quickly picked up again. The Z50 doesn't have 3D AF tracking, so it prefers my face, don't blame it. But if you go into the custom menu to switch the face and eye detection off, the wide area AF isn't as sticky on my red thing. In comparison, the Z52 wide area AF is a lot smarter to having a red thing waved in front of it and tracking it. Now I've chosen bird detection, and even though it's got foliage in the foreground, it's still focusing on that bird rather than that foliage, which is pretty much blocking the way. Now, because I am a bird photography noob, I thought this 400 millimeter lens with the 1.5 times crop factor DX sensor would be plenty sufficient, enough reach to get me those bird photography photos. But it really isn't, they're quite far away and they're tiny in the frame. And the trouble is, it's 20 megapixels, so I can't really crop too much. Not much avian activity to see, but at least even though the Z52 is a small camera, there's plenty to grip onto. The grip is great, which feels good even with a longer focal length lens mounted. In lieu of any feathered FPS frenzy, here's the Z52 at full pelt, 30 frames per second, face eye AF tracking, and it's not getting distracted by that big red thing. With that X-Speed 7 processor and that Z9-like performance, you do also get pre-release capture of one second. And with a maximum burst of 30 frames per second, well, you can do the math right. Now they have upgraded the viewfinder. It's brighter, 1000 nits bright, in fact. That's a lot of nits. Twice the amount of nits of the Z50, and I believe it's twice the amount of any competitor of the crop sensor camera world. Oh, by the way, the LCD screen is big as a 3.2 inch LCD screen now. See, the old one looked big, but part of that was space used for those irritating touch sensitive buttons. There's just no need to reinvent the button. And it's good to see the new Z52 has seen return of regular buttons. Now, as there's not much action going on, maybe I'll show you the video mode. It does do 4K 60p now before it's only just 4K 30p maximum. It is cropped though when you do 4K 60, as you can see. The video is oversampled from 5.6K, no pixel binning, and consequently the video looks nice and detailed. Colors look great, and even when working with a flat picture profile, the highlights aren't looking too shabby. And the highest frame rate you can get is 1080 120p. The 4K 50 and 60 frames per second are the only options where you'll get an extra 1.5 times crop, otherwise full DX frame throughout. See, I'm actually shooting through the reeds there, and the focus is picking up on that. I don't know where it's, it's a duck. They all look like ducks to me. Look, it's tracking this little duck butt. 
Look. Even through the trees there. Way up, there's some saucy showering action going on there. Now, at least with that crop in the 4K 50 mode, I can get that little bit more reach on the subjects. And that's the 8 bit. This is 10 bit SDR, flat picture profile. On the old Z50, you could only use the standard picture controls. The Z52 adds hybrid log gamma and N log. It's sort of to be expected in some ways, but still, the video that it produces is very pleasing. But I do like Nikon's video, and this would probably be quite nice for vlogging if you're going to be vlogging because now they have got a tilty screen which tilts this way instead of downwards, which is completely useless when you're putting it on the tripod like that. I do like the downwards flipping screen because when you look at it, it does look like you're looking through the lens, but in fact, you're just checking yourself out. But completely useless. There's also little additions that signal a more serious approach to the video part of hybrid with a somewhat now standard tally light and red box. And finally, a headphone jack. Just bear in mind that now that the screen flips and rotates, because it's a small body, the screen will whack a jack or two. One thing I do love when it comes to filming with Nikons is that the stabilization is fantastic. Of course, I do have the lens rested on there in a minute, but look, I'm going to go handheld on this 400 millimeters. I could do this all day. Sit, well, maybe not, maybe not. Okay, time for a camera change because um, the battery is pretty much run out on the Z50. It really doesn't last long at all, but there we go. Let's put that aside. Now that's a nice ornament over there. Oops, almost dropped that camera. Same size and shape, but the battery that comes with the Z52 is slightly higher capacity. Expect a little better performance, but not dramatically so. Yes, so you can shoot N-Log, but it's a shame in a way that you can't have any way of burning light in camera, because that seems to be the trend these days. But if you go back to SDR, and then we come out of that and we can set picture control. Now that brings up a new menu system. We can go down there and then you can kind of customize that. If you see here, you see the C, C1 through to 20. You've got all these different picture control profile things. You can also download different recipes from Nikon's cloud system. Now, if you want a bit more reach with video other than 4K 50, you can shoot 1080, 25 or 30p and you can have high res zoom, which I'm going to try out now. And you just use the left and right buttons and it zooms quite smoothly, actually. And the maximum there is two times. Same 20 megapixel sensor, but the image from the Z52 looks a little more refined. At ISO 1600, although there's not a significant difference in noise, the Z52 maintains the details better. At ISO 3200, you can start to see more noise on the Z50 in the midtones, while at ISO 6400, the Z50 is looking a chroma noisy mess, but the Z52 still looks very, very usable. When it comes to rolling shutter, well, on the original Z50, it was not all that bad, really. The Z52 might be a tad better, but not drastically so. Overall, video is a major improvement, and it's not surprising given how well Nikon has been equipping their cameras with not just photo features, but video of late. The fantastic 3D focusing, one second pre-release capture, nine types of subject detection is offered up from up top in their full-frame flagship Z9, right down to this very affordable DX Sensor Z52. With the Z52, it is very much a case of same, same, but oh so different. It feels very similar, although the body is actually a bit bigger, but just those little improvements. Of course, it's the same resolution, which is kind of a shame, but they've got that processor, the X-Speed 7 processor. It just makes it almost like a different class of camera. And with that viewfinder, well, it does feel good to be framing through that viewfinder. The last thing worth mentioning is a price, which puts things into perspective. It's supposedly around 1,000 quid for the 16 to 50 kit. That's less than Fujifilm XS20 money, less than a Sony A6600 or Canon R10 kit. If you're looking for a camera in that sort of price range, if you're looking for a camera in that sort of price range, if you're looking for a camera in that sort of price range, I can't help but think that the Z52 offers up a lot of camera for the money.